So we're happy to be here with you today. Um, and our presentation is called Just Because We're Small Doesn't Mean We Can't Stand Tall, A Child and Youth Rights Movement. Um, and I'll just introduce myself and then, and then Jess will introduce herself. But my name's Lisa Howell and I'm a professor at the University of Ottawa. Um, and the Faculty of Education, but for many years I was an elementary school teacher. Um, I was born and uh, raised uh, on unceded Algonquin territory uh, in Ottawa. Um, my family is of Northern European descent and I'm actually in Denmark right now. So my video is a little bit um, uh, delayed because I'm, I'm far, far away. <laughs> So some of you might know that Denmark has a, a long history of um, the colonization of Greenland. And uh, many Greenlanders who live in Copenhagen today uh, have, are, have many of the same uh, uh, issues imposed on them uh, from the Danish government that uh, we're, we're dealing with in Canada. Um, so that's, that's where I am right now and who I am. And I'm Jessica Raby, um, Jess for short, and I'm the Education and Public Engagement Coordinator here at the Caring Society. Um, I joined this past year, and I'm joining you from the Caring Society offices, which is on unceded Algonquin territory. Um, and I'll let Lisa introduce the quick agenda for today. Okay, so uh, we have 90 minutes. We might not take uh, all 90 minutes, um, but we just want to talk a little bit about who Spirit Bear is, uh, and then about uh, the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal uh, that, of course, the Caring Society has uh, championed for so many years, about children and human rights, and about some of the research that the Caring Society and the University has collaborated on now for, for many years. And the outcome of that research was something that we call the Spirit Bear Virtual School. And we're excited to share that with you today and all the resources that we've developed so that you can um, help your students stand up for the human rights of, of their, their own human rights and, and that of other children and youth. And then we're excited to show you one of the Spirit Bear films and uh, have time for, for a discussion. So while we're on the topic of introductions, I thought it would be a great idea to introduce you to one of the most important members of our team here at the Caring Society, and that is Spirit Bear. Um, he is a physical teddy bear, but he is also very sacred to us. And he was gifted to us in 2008, and May 10th is his birthday, which I say because it's a significant day in the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal case for Jordan's principal and child welfare, um, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but he's attended all of the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal cases, um, and he um, represents the 165,000 First Nations children that have been impacted by child welfare across Canada. And he also represents all those who work towards reconciliation and also reconciliation is action. Um, the, the work that we do here at the Caring Society is always centered around children and youth and Spirit, Spirit Bear sorry, has been a great way to sort of engage young people in equity for First Nations people. So that's a little bit about him and um, he'll be mentioned several times throughout this presentation. So um, I'll get started with why we're here and then Lisa will add a little bit to this. Um, so a little bit of background for you is, um, you know, since Confederation, the government has been discriminating against First Nations, Métis and Inuit um, children, but in different ways. So for First Nations children, they're subject to the Indian Act, which is the oldest law in our country of Canada. Um, and it's done things like replace traditional forms of government. Um, it's put people on reserves, ban ceremonies, ban languages, um, and ultimately forced children into residential schools. And it still exists today in 2023. 
one of the most problematic um, manifestations of the Indian Act is for First Nations children is that it creates a situation where the federal government funds um, services on reserves and in the Yukon. And for other children, their services are funded by the province. And so since Confederation, all of those services on reserves have been severely underfunded. Um, you know, things like clean drinking water in 2023 is still an issue. And um, most importantly, there's documentation of these injustices um, dating back over 100 years. And so Canada has known about these injustices against First Nations children. Um, and ultimately that it has led to unnecessary family separations, even you know, in the wake of residential schools, it was known. Um, and so this has led to a disproportionate amount of families being separated. And in addition to that, First Nations kids were also and are also denied services that are being offered to non-Indigenous kids because of who they are, just because they are First Nations. Um, and so the Spirit Bear Virtual School is, you know, a lot, a product of a lot of hard work, um, which Lisa will touch on because she was highly involved in the making of the virtual school. Um, but it essentially is seeing how the campaigns that we do and the initiatives that we do at the Caring Society, because we want everything to benefit children, it is taking a better look at what we do and seeing what the evidence is from teachers and from students who um, you know, are very involved in our campaigns and initiatives. Um, and I think something to note that was mentioned in the launch of the virtual school by my colleague, Jennifer, was that um, it took three years to get the Spirit Bear Virtual School to be what it is. And, um, you know, it was denied twice before. And when it came down to why we kept submitting and submitting in hopes that it would become a reality, is that it came back to, you know, the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child says that children not only have a right to provide a voice on matters that affect them, but they also have a right to participate in litigation on matters affecting them, and that keyword being participate. Um, we often see that people will teach kids about their rights, but not ensure that they know how to use those rights in their lived reality. Um, and ensure that they are the change agents that they can be. And so I think the Spirit Bear Virtual School is a way to provide them with the tools so that going forward, they kids can address not only the injustices that you know they see every day, but injustices throughout their lifespan. And so I'll let Lisa kind of tag on to that. So what we've tried to do at the Spirit Bear Virtual School is provide everything in one place um, where you can um, log on, you can, you can visit the website and find all the lesson plans and the learning documents. And they include uh, background information that you need to be able to teach uh, about inequities uh, imposed on First Nations, Inuit and Métis people and also uh, about ways your students, as Jess said, can, can take meaningful action uh, towards truth and reconciliation. So we're really excited to share that with you today. So a little bit of history again. Um, we talk about Dr. Peter Henderson Bryce um, as the man who knew better. So a little bit of context for you is that back in 1904, um, he worked as the chief medical inspector to the Department of the Interior and Indian Affairs, and he was tasked um, to report on the sanitary conditions of residential schools. Um, and he ultimately played an important role as a whistleblower, and he documented and released evidence of the rate at which Indigenous children were dying in residential schools. And, you know, a lot of people look at residential schools as something that happened a long time ago in history, when in reality, we know the last residential school closed only in 1996. Um, but the reality is that syst systematic discrimination continues today in 2023. And the harms that are happening for First Nations children in Canada are the same. Um, back then, he knew 
that children were dying because of discrimination and he spoke up and said something. But the reality is that children are still dying today as a result of discrimination. Um, and it's a result of their human rights being violated. So one of the reasons that the virtual school exists is to show people A, that this is still happening and B, here are some things that we can do about it. Um, you know, in curriculums in schools today, we talk about things like citizenship, um, which is great. It's kind of like, um, you know, showing up to a ceremony that's great, but it's not sufficient enough um, to teach young people how they can be activators of change. And, you know, we've seen that children see injustices so clearly. And unlike adults, children can take positive and want to take positive action to address it. Um, so it is important to talk about the truths of history and the current ongoing harms, um, but the guides and the curriculum within the virtual school um, provide a way of thinking in terms about, you know, social justice and our responsibility as citizens in actually doing something to redress the harms of the past and reimagine different relations that we can experience in the present and moving forward. And that's for you know, First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and non-Indigenous folks as well. Um, so in the conducting of the research behind the virtual school, um, it was, we heard from non-Indigenous people who, you know, they're hearing and they're learning about these realities for the first time, but there were also folks who were First Nations teachers that, you know, the kids that they were teaching, this was their lived reality. And so I think, there was a lot of thinking in terms of the context of the virtual school and to make it a place for everybody to come and to benefit. So with that, um, I think I've referred to the case a couple times, so I'll give you a little bit of context before we go forward. So um, back in 2000, the government had a solution in front of them to fix the discrimination. Um, long story short, they didn't take it. Um, today, that's called Jordan's Principle, named after Jordan River Anderson. And, um, you know, by 2005, there were, I think, two solutions in front of the government that acknowledged the underfunding and provided tangible solutions to the, to the discrimination. And they still chose not to take it. So in 2007, the Assembly of First Nations and the Caring Society filed a human rights case um, alleging that Canada was racially discriminating against First Nations children by providing less funding um, to child welfare on reserves. And so the government essentially spent eight years trying to throw the case out. And during that time, Spirit Bear was gifted to the Caring Society and attended all of those um, hearings. And so the goal of having Spirit Bear in the case was to remind the adults that we were talking about kids. Everything that we talk about in the courtroom has to do and has real tangible impacts on children. And so it wasn't until 2013 that it was heard, the case was heard at the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal. And then three years later in 2016, ultimately the tribunal did in fact find that the government was racially discriminating against 165,000 First Nations children by providing flawed and inequitable child welfare services and also failing to implement Jordan's principle. Um, so the impact was that thousands of First Nations children were coming into care unnecessarily and they were being separated from their families. Um, and you know, you can only imagine how traumatic that can be. And obviously it's an extension of residential schools. Um, and we talk about this because despite the outcome of the case, it is still a reality in 2023 that First Nations children, youth and families are having their rights violated. Um, and this is still something that's going on today. So in the creation of the virtual school, I think the idea was to be realistic um, about, you know, we've seen in history where adults have put kids in situations where it's not really about um, respectful ad advocacy and, um, you know, respecting the intelligence of children in child development in ways that they can use their thinking skills um, to work through certain issues and take actions in accordance um, and I think 
the goal, and Lisa will talk about it more, was to stray away from social programming. Um, I think the idea was that the virtual school was is going to be a place where we want to raise a critical generation of kids so that you know we can document what's happening, but also they can provide feedback as to you know what we're doing here at the Caring Society and make sure that what we're doing is loving justice. And um, I think that's why the research was so important in the early days was so that teachers could you know, have an input as to what they see and the impacts that it has on kids in the classroom. Um, and so, you know, if they see an injustice, not only, you know, for First Nations children, but in general, we can equip kids with the tools that they need to be able to speak up about these injustices, whether it's, you know, for somebody with a disability or somebody within a minority group that they, you know, are addressing things in a matter that upholds human dignity. And so I guess that was really the goal was to, you know, let a bit of fresh air into the caring society, but also um, ensure that social justice learning and its transformative power within classrooms and communities can be a reality. Um, I think we also see too often that when adults become involved in matters that affect kids, that sometimes they're, we can get sidetracked with conversations that don't ultimately benefit kids at the end of the day. And so um, Lisa might touch on this again, but something that happened in the early days of the case was something called I'm a Witness, um, where you know they invited k people to come into the classroom or into the courtroom, sorry, and witness the injustices for themselves. And not a lot of people came in the beginning, um, but that changed in 2009 when a group of high school students came and they stayed for the entire hearing. Um, and then they came back again the next time with t-shirts and signs and um, younger students as well. And I think a lot of the adults in the room probably thought, you know, like they'll never understand the legal language, the this is beyond them sort of thing. But again, it comes back to kids can see right and wrong very easily. And they know, you know, that treating somebody different because they're for the first nations child is not right and you know we don't want to grow up in a society where other kids are left behind and so they want to be part of the change and they came you know with homemade signs with glitter and since then it's evolved in that you know they come and gather together and they have songs and poems and they dance and ultimately they're just present and um the case brought together kids in a way that we hadn't seen before. And we wanted to extend that. And so the care, or the Spirit Bear Virtual School is a way that we can do that um, across the country virtually. Um, and, you know, this is an extension of the case essentially in that it's a gathering of kids who can see right and wrong and we have the tools to give them to be able to take, you know, this social justice into their own lives. And with that, I'll hand it over to Lisa. Thanks, Jess. So what did we find from the research? Um, what, we, what we found, and we talked to about 15 teachers uh, about their experiences of working with children and youth on um, issues of inequity uh, related to First Nations children in Canada. And I think the most profound thing we found was that from the research was teachers saying that children's voices have power, uh, but this is when we give them space for their voices to have power. And when we give them space to have that power, children sometimes find their voice. Um, and interestingly enough, when, when I started working with the Caring Society, 14 years ago, um, I was a classroom teacher and I, um, and I, uh, 
I saw it happening in front of my eyes. I saw my children that, you know, were often the most disengaged were suddenly very engaged because they were using all those skills, reading and writing and critical thinking and speaking uh, for a purpose that they felt uh, motivated and, and authentically engaged in. So these are just some quotes from teachers that um, we interviewed. And I think they really speak to to what what Jess was saying about children and youth having um, a, a vast ability to to understand issues of equity and inequity and fairness and justice and ultimately love uh, and, and ultimately the kind of country that they want to be part of and and grow up in and be adults in. Um, and so that was that was one of our, our big findings. And then Jess, if you can just move to the next um, slide, please. And so that that what we saw as teachers on the ground and as researchers and, and university professors really was what drove this this research. So we really want to honor the children and youth who, you know, in those early days went to the federal hearings, went to court, went to parliament, calling on the government to um, to, to end the discrimination uh, on reserves and, and also off reserves and services for First Nations children. And then finally for our next um, slide, I'll just talk about some of the other uh, things that we found. And oh, I see a comment here. So we interviewed 15, one five teachers, yeah. Um, so what we also found out was that it's it's when when students learn about social justice and not only learn about but participate in social justice, um, it's transformational, not only for students but for educators. So we found that educators were saying, like suddenly I felt uplifted again. Suddenly I felt like I had a reason to be in the classroom and and also that for their own learning because you know it's only in recent years now that in teacher education programs in Canada, um, is in some provinces of course they started earlier, but the teacher candidates are learning about uh, truth and and working towards reconciliation so teachers felt that it was teaching them uh the history of canada that they had not learned um, and was helping them unlearn some of the the mythic narratives that are so often reproduced and they were learning with their students so instead of um you know being uh, the teacher knowing all this type of learning really engages teacher as facilitator and as a co-learner. And we know that that is when learning really happens the best. That's that's how we want to, to be. So really exciting uh, research for us. And then, and then what came about was teachers saying, you know, we like the Caring Society, we really like the campaigns and the resources they're, that they're producing, but we'd really love something where we can come together and connect and find everything in one place. And of course, this research started right before the pandemic and then continued during the pandemic. So um, the COVID-19 uh, situation really uh, affected our research and also allowed us to view virtual learning as something that actually could be a good thing and bring people together. So that's how the school was created. Um, and what we're going to do now is just walk through the school. Um, we will, I put a link in the chat of the website of the school. So I, feel free, I'd really love if you wanna go on the school with me and we'll just take a, an interactive tour of the school so that you, you can have an idea of where to find what when hopefully you take up this work with your own students. So the school really responds to what the teachers that we interviewed asked for. Um, and it did take quite a few years to, to come together. Um, we're still working on lots of different aspects of the school, but 
this is what we've got for right now. So the school really has a few different sections. Um, we have the Spirit Bears Berry Caring Curriculum and Learning Guides, and we're going to start uh, there, our tour there. So Jess is kindly going to click on the links and so that we can see the website together. You can see that okay? Um, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so here we are on the, the page with the curriculum and the learning guides. Right now we have um, the curriculum is completely finished. So Jess, if you don't mind just clicking on the curriculum, we'll just go through it a little bit. The curriculum was really important for us to put together because um, as I mentioned before, and it's in English and French, um, as I mentioned before, teachers were saying, you know, sometimes I don't feel that I have the knowledge to teach uh, about uh, inequities uh, and truth and um, things that have gone on in Canada and, and that limits me from, from approaching the topic. So the first really 15 or so pages of the curriculum tries to give you that context so that you have the information in order to then uh, help your students learn. We also have a glossary you can see on the page with the spirit bear in the glasses. Um, we've created a glossary. So there's words uh, highlighted throughout the curriculum and learning guides that um, if you're, you want, you can click on the word and you'll go into the glossary to have a, a definition. So we've really tried to do a lot of that work for you so that you feel comfortable and, and confident. Um, and that, um, uh, yeah, so Jess is just pulling up the, the learning guide now. So this learning guide is evolving. Uh, so it might change from time to time as, you know, words and language and terms change. Um, so we'll update it as we go. And then we'll go back into the curriculum. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Jess has kindly offered to do all of this because my um, computer is a bit slow being far away, I think. Okay. Okay, so back to the curriculum. If we go down to um, where we have, where we start with the broad the broad areas of learning which we call the touchstones of hope so maybe some of you have heard about the touchstones of hope before but there are five principles that were actually created almost 20 years ago uh, when a group of indigenous and non-indigenous social work professionals came together to really look at how they could better uh, honor uh, First Nations children in uh, child welfare care. And so these five touchstones help us guide us through this work. Uh, so when we created the curriculum, we decided that we would call them touchstones for learning. And, um, and so they're self-determination, culture, language, a holistic approach, structural interventions, and non-discrimination. So each uh, touchstone we go through, we, we give you some key takeaways of the touchstones, and then we look at how it connects to learning goals for students um, and teachers, and then we relate it to a process of reconciliation. So we have four uh, processes of reconciliation, which are truth-telling, acknowledging, restoring, and relating. So I often kind of think that the touchstones are um, kind of the what of what we're teaching and then the reconciliation process is how we're going to get there. And we want to recognize that learning is not linear. Nothing in life is linear. So these are circular processes that we'll, we'll keep coming back to. But we find that this curriculum provides a framing um, for teachers, not only in terms of background context and, and learning, but also in terms of the pedagogy of the learning guides and the learning goals. 
So I won't go through every example with you, um, but that that's how they all follow. So just like the self-determination touchstone where we have the learning goals, uh, we have the key takeaways, um, and then we uh, connect it to the reconciliation processes. That's how we've done it for each different touchstone. So I think that's good with the curriculum now, Jess. Okay. So we can close that up. Hmm, and I see a question. Okay, that's great. We'll, we'll come back to that in, in a minute, Leba. So we have a, a learning guide, um, Jordan's Principle. Uh, so we'll open that up. And this is to help you when you teach your students about uh, Jordan's Principle and about the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal case. Some of you might have heard of Jordan River Anderson, but he was a, a little boy born, um, he was from Norway House Cree Nation, which is in Northern Manitoba. And he was born in uh, a Manitoba hospital, provincial hospital in Winnipeg. And when he was born, he had some very complex medical needs and he had to stay in the hospital. But uh, about two years later, doctors said that Jordan could go live in, in a family home, um, that he did not need to stay in the hospital anymore, um, but he would need home care just like many of us do in our lives when we get to different stages. Um, and what happened next was um, that the provincial government didn't want to pay for his home care because they argued that he was a, a status Indian, First Nations child, and thus a federal responsibility. But the federal government argued that because he was born a, in a provincial hospital, the province should pay for his at-home care. And they continued to argue and Jordan was trapped in the hospital because he could not leave the hospital without his home care set up. And he died in the hospital uh, three years later when he was just five years old. And as Cindy Blackstock often talks about, you know, Jordan never got to sleep in a cozy bed his own bed. He never got to splash in a mud puddle or uh, be around the drums in a cultural ceremony. Um, he was relegated to the hospital because the governments could not uh, stop fighting. And so um, a principal was named in honor of Jordan with the blessing of Jordan's family called Jordan's Principal. And it, it's, it's simple. It says that um, when a child needs service, that uh, the government who's contacted first pays for the service, and then the provincial and federal governments can argue all they want about it later. But the child comes first, so it's a child's first principle. So um, when I first started teaching my students about this, uh, they were absolutely felt immediately connected to Jordan, and they understood that this could happen to any child in Canada and that 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 wasn't okay that that could happen because just because you're First Nation. So they started uh, wanting to write letters to the government. They started wanting to uh, march to Parliament. And so this movement really came about where children started standing up for Jordan's legacy and to honor him and also in recognition of all the children who um, were also experiencing discrimination. So this learning guide uh, is about Jordan's principle and we'll just maybe go through it now, Jess, um, and I'll just show you a few different things about the guide. So again, the first part is really to help you have the context. I gave you a very short uh, story about Jordan, but this fleshes it out in much more detail so that you are confident to have the knowledge um, to, to teach it. Um, we also have a whole section here that we're calling a did you know section and different parts uh, once we get into the learning guide they're linked back to the did you know section so if you're uh, in a place in a learning guide and you're preparing to teach your students 
you just click the link and it'll take you back to the information that you need. And of course we have the glossary in here too. So this, we'll just stop here. This is a picture of Jordan River Anderson. Um, and, uh, and then we, we give you lots of information about him. There he is there. So we'll just go down and we'll go into the guide a little bit. Okay. So lots of lots of information for you. So now the guide is divided up into different learning activities or lesson plans, however we want to call them these days. And we've divided it up between uh, kindergarten and grade two, uh, grades three and four, and grades five and six. And each, um, each different level follows the same format. We've also given suggestions for um, extending the learning or simplifying the learning in recognition that all learners uh, learn differently. So in this one, for example, uh, for the first learning experience, we have learning about Jordan River Anderson's life. We have some learning goals. Um, we give you some guiding questions to help you with uh, introducing it to your class. Um, we've given you a time frame and then a lesson sequence. And in the lesson sequence, everything is linked in there that you would need to, to, to go through the lesson with your class. And then we have next steps um, to extend the learning. We have lots of visuals throughout the guide that you can use to show your class. Um, and they build on each other. Um, so we do recommend kind of going through uh, each section uh, depending on your grade level and, and, you know, starting with the first one, there's four lessons per um, grade level. And uh, we have lots of, lots of links throughout. So we've really tried to make it uh, easy, user-friendly, and that everything you need to teach is right there. And that's also in recognition that we know teachers uh, have so much work and so much on their plate, and we really want uh, this to be uh, something that you enjoy teaching and that you, um, you don't feel is another thing to do, but something that uh, inspires you. So thanks, Jess. Jess is just going through. So all the different um, levels. Um, and they were written, as I said, I was a teacher and then another teacher wrote them. So we hope that um, they're really useful for you. So I think that's good, um, Jess, for Jordan's principle. That gives a good feeling. Yep. Okay. Okay, and then very soon we'll have a Shannon's Dream Learning Guide out. It's been written. It's just uh, going through the final revision. So that will soon be up there too, so that you can teach about um, education inequities uh, in First Nation communities. And then we'll go to uh, our next section, which is more resources. Okay. Sorry, where do you want to go? To more learning opportunities and resources. Oh, okay. 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 So in this section of the Spirit Bear Virtual School, we uh, have a video of when we launched the school and you can uh, see Cindy Blackstock talking a little bit about the, the idea behind the, the school. And then if we go down a little bit, we have uh, three videos that we've made. Um, 
two are with educators. So one is with a, a, a early childhood educator. Um, and she also did her PhD in Toronto about truth and reconciliation in the early years. So if anyone here is uh, curious about how this might work with younger students, I would take a, a look at that video. Um, and then the next video is with two kindergarten teachers, again, talking about uh, early years learning and, um, and Spirit Bear and their resources. So we'll add videos as we go, um, just to help you listen to other teachers who have been part of this work and have have some suggestions and and ideas about how you how to go about it. And I think we have some podcasts on there too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Perfect. And then, Jess, if we want to go to the um, films and the TV, maybe you can speak to that. So, Spirit, oh, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So, Spirit Bears Films, um, previously before November 20th, um, they weren't all in one place. Um, you kind of had to go to different websites or YouTube to watch them. Um, and since then, on November 20th, we've launched what we are calling Spirit Bear TV. So you can watch all three of Spirit Bear's films in English, French closed caption, um, all in one place. So actually, I can probably open up Spirit Bear TV. So this is what it looks like. Um, you can watch the trailers, you can watch the French, the English, and all three, this is honoring memories, planting dreams. Um, but everything is in one place for you to watch and enjoy. Um, we encourage you to stop throughout the film, ask questions, talk with your students, engage them in the conversations, and again, the learning guides associated um, not only with the films, each film has its own learning guide, but you can also go back and use the curriculum and the learning guides in the virtual school to guide your conversations as well. You know, we're talking about things like fairness, which is easier for younger folks, younger students to grasp. Um, but then you're also getting a bit more um, nuanced conversations for older students as well. So. The launch of Sphere Bear TV is here. Everything is in one place um, for you to enjoy. And of course, you can find all the links and such on um, the Caring Society website. So with that, I think we will watch the first Spirit Bear film, which is Spirit Bear Children Make History. Um, I thought it would be fitting considering we were talking about Jordan River Anderson um, and his learning guides that we have as part of the virtual school. And so um, we can all watch the film together and feel free to share your thoughts or questions in the little chat box. And Lisa and I will do our best to get, get back to you all. So let's see if I can, I wonder, does this play with the hearing intact? <laughs> Friends, it's nice to see you here. My name is Mary the Bear, and this is my son Spirit Bear, or Sasal in the carrier language. His birthday is on May 10th. He was born in 2007. He has three sisters, Era Bear, Cedar Bear, and Mamangwe Bear. We are members of the Carrier Sikani Tribal Council in British Columbia. 
I work with people at Carrier Sicani Child and Family Services to help children and families feel healthy and proud. Spirit Bear is a barrister, and his job is to help kids like you stand up for the fair treatment of First Nations children. Spirit Bear and I believe that children can change the world because we saw it happen. In 2008, when he was just a little cub, Spirit Bear made the long trip to Ottawa, Canada's capital city, to witness a very important human rights case. He went to watch, listen, and stand up for First Nations kids. And Spirit Bear wasn't the only one. This is a story how kids, kids just like you, can make a difference, and how bears and other animals helped along the way. I love kids and hugs and huckleberries. Did you know that the government of Canada is supposed to look after all the children who live here equally? The problem is it doesn't. For a long time, First Nations kids have been getting less money than other children for things they really need, like health care, education, help for families, and even basics such as clean water. In February of 2007, the First Nations Child and Family Caring Society, called the Caring Society for short, and the Assembly of First Nations went to the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal to try and change that. A tribunal is like a court where groups can go to try and solve a problem. People from the First Nations and the Government of Canada talked to the tribunal members, who are like judges, to explain their sides of the story. The Government of Canada tried to stop the tribunal from hearing the case. It took six years for the hearing to officially start, almost two years for the hearing itself, and then over a year for a decision to be made. That's nine years. <laughs> That's a really nice try. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I teach cubs as much as I can. I teach them that when they see someone being treated badly, they need to go learn about it and do what they can to help make things better. Shh, the class is about to start. Sus? 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 Bear? Bear? Zal? Zal? Even though he was just a little cub, I knew that Spirit Bear, like all children, understood fairness. I told him about the human rights case at the tribunal and he wanted to do something to help. He decided that he would go to Ottawa to witness the case and stand up for the fair treatment of First Nations kids. He took the train, his favorite way to travel, for a very long journey from Carrier Sicani territory in Northern British Columbia. I was so proud of him. I believe that children can change the world. After a long journey, Spirit Bear made it to Ottawa in the province of Ontario. Ottawa is on the unceded land of the Algonquin First Nations, and the name of the city comes from the Algonquin word Adawe, which means trade. Cindy! Cindy! Hi, Spirit Bear! It's so nice to see you. Are you here for the human rights case too? I am. There are First Nations people from all across Canada here too. But where's everyone else? I wish more people would help. 
I'm glad you're here too, Spirit Bear. The Caring Society and Assembly of First Nations filed this case so that First Nations children and families have the help they need to get through hard times from child welfare services, like other children in Canada. These services are meant to keep kids safe, at home with their families, and connected to their culture. Cindy also told Spirit Bear about a very special boy named Jordan River Anderson from Norway House Cree Nation in Manitoba. Jordan was born in 1999 with a serious health condition. Doctors said he needed to stay in the hospital so they could help him. When Jordan turned two years old, doctors said he could go home but needed some medicines and helpers there to keep him healthy. The governments of Manitoba and Canada argued for a long time over the money to pay for the things Jordan needed to go home. They argued for so long that Jordan got sick again and passed away. Jordan's family wanted to make things better for other kids, so we created Jordan's principal, and Jordan's teddy bear wanted to help. So when you want to learn more about Jordan's principal, just look for the blue bear. Jordan's principle is a rule saying that arguments about money should not stop kids from getting the help they need. Jordan's principle says that First Nations children should get the help they need, like visits to doctors or extra help in school, when they need it. It's what this tribunal case is all about. Only Cindy the Sheep and Spirit Bear are watching as the government tries to stop the tribunal from hearing about the unfairness to First Nations kids. I'm glad I have you here with me, Cindy. We're not alone, Spirit Bear. The ancestors are with us, and soon they will call other people to come as well. And just like that, Cindy and Spirit Bear are no longer alone. A group of high school students have come to bear witness and learn what's going on, so they can tell others about what's happening and how they can help. Hi, Spirit Bear. Hi, Cindy. Hi there. We heard about the case, and we are here to let people know that all children matter. We want First Nation children to know that they are not alone. The students invite their families and friends to come watch. Soon the tribunal hearing room is full of young people of all ages. They give Cindy and Spirit Bear lots of hugs and tell them what they are learning. 
It was such a great day because I knew then that First Nations kids would never be alone again. It's not right that First Nations have to fight for things all other people in Canada enjoy. We wrote a recipe for how to treat First Nations kids. 40 cups of clean water for every child, infinity cups of not breaking law, 80 billion cups of love, 10 cups of clothes, 10,000 cups of education, 15 cups of school supplies for each child, 700 bowls of food, 10,000 cups of healthcare and doctors, 15,000 cups of hospitals, 9,999 cups of money, 10,000 cups of peace. That's right. Cindy and I are so happy you're here. We're going to invite other kids and teachers to come witness the case with us. Just because we're small doesn't mean we can't stand tall. Children have power and can change the world. It's Valentine's Day and the government is still trying to stop the tribunal from taking on the case. Hundreds of children are on Parliament Hill. They've planned a big event called Have a Heart Day. They've written letters asking the government of Canada to have a heart for First Nations children. This letter to the Prime Minister asked the government to end the discrimination and start making changes so First Nations children have a fair chance to grow up safely with their families, get a good education, be healthy, and feel proud of who they are. They're right. First Nations know what is best for their children and communities. I have wonderful news. My sister Era Bear has come to live with me. missed you. I missed you too, Era. Ah. I have so much to tell you. I learned so much since I last saw you. That sounds exciting. I love my family. I love being with family too, Spirit Bear. All children should have the chance to grow up safely at home. Tell me about your trip to Ottawa. Well, on my way to Ottawa, I met with some Indigenous grown-ups. They were sharing stories about the way they were treated as children by the government with a group called the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Many were treated badly and the stories were sad. I learned a lot about the unfair way Indigenous peoples have been treated. And I learned that helping to fix the unfairness, it is called reconciliation. The TRC has lots of calls to actions to help learn from the past so we can do a better job respecting Indigenous people's rights, cultures, and languages. Did you know there are over 50 Indigenous languages in Canada? That's a lot of ways to say spirit bear. 
Yes, and every one of those languages has all kinds of knowledge in them. That's why we need to make sure all First Nations children can speak their languages so the knowledge won't be lost. How should we get started, Spirit Bear? Well, when we work together, we are stronger. Everyone repeat after me. We can all help make the Truth and Reconciliation Commission calls to action real. After years of the government trying to stop the case, the tribunal has agreed that it can officially go ahead starting today. The hearing room is packed. There are new faces and kids who have been here before, but have grown a lot bigger than when we last saw them. <gasps> Bear Bear! Wow, you're all so much bigger. I'm so very happy to see you. We missed you. Spirit Bear, we brought something for you. Thank you. <laughs> Yay! The tribunal hearings are finally over. Now we have to wait for the tribunal's decision. I don't like waiting. I get butterflies in my stomach. But the good memories of the children I've met, who've held me, told me their stories and dressed me up, make me happy. Plus now, I have more clothes than Cindy the Sheep, and she loves fashion. Mm. Hmm? I am very happy. After nine years, the tribunal ruled that First Nations children must get proper funding for the help they need. My friends are cheering and say they will keep working until the change actually happens. Yay! Yay, Spirit Bear! We did it! It's Spirit Bear's ninth birthday today, or birthday in the bear world. We've planned a big party for this special day. Cindy is here along with other children and grown-ups. They've brought their bears with them to help spread the word about Jordan's principle. Teddies were Jordan's favorite toy. We've invited people across the country to join in and bring their bears to daycare, school, or work too. We call it Bear Witness Day. Happy birthday, Spirit Bear. Yeah, happy birthday, Spirit Bear. Oh, wow. My own teddy bear. Thank you. I will take good care of him. It's August 1st now. Cindy and Spirit Bear are at the Norway House Cree Nation where Jordan's family lives for the Jordan's Principal Parade. Every year, children gather their teddy to march in a parade to celebrate Jordan's principle. Ow! 
After 10 long years learning about the unfair way First Nations kids are treated, my son is getting an honorary barrister degree from Osgood Law School. It's for his courageous support and bearing witness throughout a long and difficult process of truth-telling and healing. Everyone at the Carrier Sikani Tribal Council is very proud of Spirit Bear. I'm super proud of all the children who stood up for fairness at the tribunal. As the children say, just because we're small doesn't mean we can't stand tall. After all, no one would think a bear could be a barrister, but here I am. Yay, Spirit Bear! We made this banner for you, Spirit Bear. Many First Nations children still don't get the things other kids get, like safe and comfy schools, proper health care, and clean drinking water. Let's join hands and paws and hooves to work together until every First Nation child is treated fairly. Remember, Every child matters. You matter. Yes, you matter. to dream. I want the world to treat me fair. I deserve a chance to see a place to be with eager eyes and have my family close to me. Then you came and heard my voice. You made us loud and now I can't avoid. We have a heart. We have a dream. Nothing lasts me. So, as you can see, and somebody kindly pointed out in the, one of the comments that, you know, these films are dealing with big conversations, but in tangible ways for kids to understand, and the virtual school is an extension off of that. Um, so with that, maybe Lisa, do you want to facilitate the discussion? Yeah. So I, I know there's a few questions that I, I saw in the chat. Um, one was about uh, the transformative nature of social justice and, and asking if uh, perhaps it should be mandatory. Mandatory is really difficult, right? But I think that a curriculum um, needs to definitely recognize that if we want our children to grow up um, as compassionate and informed and empathetic and active citizens, then we certainly need to engage them in uh, learning that promotes those things. So we can't have one without the other. Um, uh, and then another question was, how might a teacher go about integrating this into the curriculum? So one thing I often tell my students uh, who are teacher candidates is that the curriculum is a document. Um, and but you are you are the professional that takes the curriculum and brings it to life for your students. And that often depends on who your students are and what their own interests are and and, and where they're at. So it's kind of like the curriculum is um, a jar of paint, but then you're the artist. So I think if you were to take a look at the Spirit Bear curriculum and the lesson guides, you'd really see right away that, oh, I can, this is language arts, right? Reading the Spirit Bear books, responding, reflecting, um, critically analyzing things. Um, writing letters to government officials, um, persuasive writing, all of speaking skills. So obviously it fits really well with language arts, but also with social studies, with history. Um, there's, I think teachers are such creative 
uh, and knowledgeable professionals that we can, if we decide that it is important, then we can find a way to fit it in our curriculum. So I hope th those um, that's helpful. Uh, I'm just looking to see if there's other questions. Okay, maybe this one is for you, Jess. Um, has this film been shared with kinship care providers and the children in their care through provincial government departments? Um, Spirit Brew TV is somewhere that anybody can access the film. So um, I guess, like I said earlier, in case you missed it, um, before November 20th, not all the films were available for free, um, but because we at the Caring Society are working towards having, you know, we really value accessibility. Um, we've made all of the films available for free. So anybody anywhere can access all of the films in one place, French and English, um, well, French subtitles um, and closed captions. But so anybody anywhere can access all of the films now. So they are available. Uh, and Spirit Bear also has books. So on the in the Spirit Bear Virtual School, there's a whole section of the Spirit Bear books, which the films are actually based off of. And the books also have learning guides that go with them. Uh, and the books, uh, I've used them with students uh, in grade uh, eight and grade nine. So even though they're about a bear and they, um, they, uh, you know, might seem geared to younger learners, the concepts in them uh, are appropriate for all learners and can be used uh, in so many different contexts. And Jess, maybe you can speak to the languages that the books are available in at the moment. Yes, so all of our books, you'll find the webpage on the Caring Society website for books. Um, all of the books have a PDF available in French, English, and various First Nations languages. So you can peruse to see if, you know, if you want a certain book in French, it's available on there in a PDF. And then if you'd like to purchase a hard copy, we do have French and English available for purchase um, through Indigo Chapters. And also I believe they're on Amazon currently. So, um, they are available to you for free also on the website um, alongside the films. So, um. Wonderful. Yeah. Are there any other uh, questions or concerns or comments? Oh, I see one popping up now. Um, let's see. How would you go about addressing a situation in which a child may feel potentially triggered by the content? Yeah, that's a that's a really important question. Um, so I, you know, I wouldn't read Spirit Bear on the first day of school. Um, I would really uh, wait until you have, you know, built that community with your class, um, where it's a safe space, uh, where um, where students, students in the room have a voice, uh, can express their worries and fears and concerns. So I think uh, this work really um, depends on, uh, it creates, but it also depends on having a strong classroom community. Um, and, and again, you can also let students know that some things in, in the story are going to be sad um, and that it's okay for them to feel sad and um, and and then just provide space to stop and kind of unpack the book or the film as you go, uh, check in with the student later, all those things as teachers that I think we so naturally uh, and intuitively do. Jess, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? I guess also, like going through the curriculum and the learning guides, we're picking things that, you know, you can use in a way that you see fit for the audience that, you know, 
that you're working with in your classroom and you can pull things like conversations around fairness. It doesn't have to be specific to one situation or scenario um, that could potentially be triggering. It could just be a very open conversation. And I think that comes into the human rights element of it is that, you know, we want kids to be aware of what their rights are, but also, um, equip them with the tools to be able to use them in their own life. It doesn't have to be um, very specific on the first day of class, like Lisa said. Um, it's something that you build up towards, but there is aspects throughout the guide and the curriculum that could be starting points for just a very general and open conversation. Um, so hopefully that's helpful for you. Any other questions or comments? Anything anyone wants to add? Mm. Oh, thank you so much, um, Leiba. And for all your questions too, we really appreciated. You brought up lots of things that I'm sure uh, many of us were considering and thinking about. Um, really thank you all for being here and um you know i often find when i attend these sessions there's i don't always think of things uh in the session but uh we have our all of the information if you we hope that you'll reach out um and just you might just want to go over that a little bit yeah so Thank you both. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, but again, if you have any questions or things that come to mind afterwards, um, you can reach us through the email that's available on the screen. And again, I can forward email specific to Lisa as well to her. Um, and if you want to stay updated on any of the latest Caring Society um, events, campaigns, anything that's coming up, our social media is on the screen for you. And our website is full of resources for you to explore. And I encourage you to go through the curriculum and the learning guide and see how it might fit into your um, classroom or your life. And um, I guess thank you. Thank you all for joining us. Mm.